Alright, now that Pichu's done, up next is Pikachu. Alright, we're going to be taking a look at information that Pikachu has. And let me just say, there's a lot to cover for. Now for Pikachu's information, his weight is 6.0 kilograms, his height is 0.4 meters, he's also an electric type, and his abilities are static, which works on Pikachu. The lightning rod ability works on cosplay Pikachu, and the lightning rod is a hidden ability. Wait, imagine if cosplay Pikachu had lightning rod and lightning rod as a hidden ability? That would actually be crazy. Now for his catch rate, it's 190, and it's roughly 35.2 percentage, which also has the same catch rate as Pichu. So it evolves from Pichu when leveled up with high friendship, and evolves into Raichu when exposed to a Thunderstone. However, the starter Pikachu in Pokemon Yellow will refuse to evolve into Raichu unless it is traded and evolved on another save file. In Aloha, however, Pikachu will evolve into a Lolan Raichu when exposed to a Thunderstone. So, whenever Pikachu comes across something new, it blasts it with a jolt of electricity. If you come across the Black and Berry, it's evidence that this Pokemon mistook the intensity of its charge. Looks like that might have been a low off for Pikachu's electric attacks. Now, for Pikachu, you can tell that there's a gender differences. So, let me switch to the female. It has a heart-shaped tail. So that is pretty cool. So, that is a pretty amazing feature for Pikachu. Now, when it comes to Pikachu in the Super Smash Bros. series, well, he was a playable character in all the games in that series. So for Super Smash Bros. on the Nintendo 64, Pikachu is a playable character, and is the only Pokemon that is playable from the start of the game. Its main stage is Saffron City. So in the hands of a skilled player, Pikachu is not to be taken lightly. Alongside electrical attacks, it has very good aerial attacks and superb but hard to master recovery move. Pikachu is also one of the lightest characters in the game, making it easy for its foes to launch it. Despite this, top-level Super Smash Bros. Nintendo 64, players have placed Pikachu at the top of their list, theoretically making it the best character in the game. So, that is a pretty big accomplishment for Pikachu. Now, Pikachu is the best character in the game for Super Smash Bros. on the Nintendo 64. However, things started to change when it got to Super Smash Bros. Melee. And yes, Pikachu is a returning playable character, and it's the only Pokemon that is playable from the start of the game, as usual. Its main stage is Pokemon Stadium because Saffron City was did not make it in the game. So, while Pikachu's playstyle remained the same, it was powered down in the sequel like Kirby and Ness, by having less range in the majority of its attacks, and its recovery travels a shorter distance. It did gain a few buffs, however as Quick Attack now deals damage and Thunder Jolt travels underneath stages. So, I think that's pretty cool. Okay, so it looks like they went into more development on Pikachu for Super Smash Bros. Brawl. And yes, Pikachu is a returning playable character to the franchise but it has been strengthened, and is now at a closer spot to its original placement in the first game due to faster air speed, ability to chain, grab, and a better grab reach. Its final smash move is Volt Tackle. It has different designs for hats, including Red's hat from Pokemon Red and Blue. It also looks similar to the hat that Ash wears, so that's pretty cool. And for Volt Tackle, Basically, it doesn't cause recoil damage for Pikachu for some reason. Now, when it comes to the subspace emissary, Pikachu is first seen in the research facility stage, where its electricity is used to power a generator. Responding to its shrieks of pain and taking pity on it, 
Zero Suit Samus saves it by destroying the generator. The two then face a group of robbed sentries. Pikachu then joins uh, Samus to search for her stolen power suit. The suit is soon recovered and then are soon confronted by Ridley, who grabs Samus and begins dragging her across the walls. Pikachu then returns the favor as it zaps Ridley with a powerful thunder attack. Wow, that's super effective on a flying type. Haha, <laughs> Ridley, a flying type. <laughs> the two later meet up with Donkey Kong, Diddy Kong, Captain Falcon, and Olimar to prevent a group of robbed sentries from setting off subspace bombs. After failing to defeat Ganondorf and his army, the ancient minister becomes robbed and then the gang escapes using Captain Falcon's ship. After defeating Meta Ridley, Pikachu and the gang meet up with the rest of the heroes and infiltrate subspace, where Pikachu and the others prepare to confront Taboo. Wow, looks like they're getting ready for an epic battle. Now for Pikachu and Super Smash Bros. for Wii U and 3DS, not much has changed for Pikachu, but just like in Brawl, Pikachu was the amongst the first returning characters announced for the two-part fourth iteration of the series. So, that's pretty cool. And finally, we have Pikachu and Super Smash Bros. Ultimate. Everyone is here. As one of the original eight fighters of the first Super Smash Bros., Pikachu is one of the few characters in the game unlocked from the start in all modes except Adventure Mode, which is World of Light. As such, completing Classic Mode with it will unlock other fighters in a specific order. In Super Smash Bros. Ultimate, Pikachu has access to palette swaps that depict it as female, including one that dresses it as Pikachu Library and another that gives it Celine's casual cap. Wow, those are some pretty cool costumes for Pikachu. Its final smash, Volt Tackle, has also been adjusted to be automatic making it easier to hit enemies. Wow, that's a pretty big improvement for that final smash. Now for classic mode, Pikachu's classic mode route is called I Choose You, which is a reference to Ash's catchphrase, and in turn, the first episode of the series, or also Pokemon I Choose You, which is a movie. Its opponents, save for Master Hand and Crazy Hand, if the player reaches the fight, at intensity 7.0 or higher are all Pokemon, including Mewtwo as well. The player is allowed to heal with a maximum tomato between the Mewtwo and hand fights and for World of Light in the adventure mode. In the opening cutscene of World of Light, Pikachu tried to run away from the beams of light alongside Sonic. Sonic, seeing Pikachu fall behind, slowed down to try to and save him, but the two were ultimately unable to outrun Galeem's attack and were blown away. Pikachu's trophy is located somewhere on the World of Light overworld. After defeating it, Pikachu is freed and can be selected in battle in the adventure mode. Wow, I guess somebody might save Pikachu after all. Oh. And if you thought Pikachu was only playable in the Super Smash Bros. series, well, you are wrong. Pikachu is also playable in Pokémon Tournament DX. Pikachu is a playable character for the arcade fighting game. Its moveset includes electrical attacks it uses in the main games, like Thunderbolt, Electro Ball, and Thunder. In burst form, it can use the burst attack, Volt Shock Fist. Several of its attacks and victory poses are directly taken from Hiachi and uh, Kazuya Mishima movesets from the Tekken series. Pikachu Library was first announced alongside the Wii U port of the game as well. She was later released as an additional fighter on the original arcade version. Wow, that's pretty cool. You can play as two Pikachus. Now, Pikachu has also appeared in spin-off games as well. For Pokemon Stadium, Pikachu stars in the minigame Thundering Dynamo, alongside Voltorb. 
This mini game involves charging up electric power. In Hey You Pikachu, Pikachu stars alongside an unnamed child who bears a striking resemblance to Red, who was recently taught how to interact with wild Pokemon by Professor Oak. The boy and Pikachu from a bond and go on many d adventures together, and one day the Pikachu decided to live with the boy. Wow, that's a pretty nice relationship there. For Pokemon Stadium 2, Pikachu can be used in Pichu's power plant if one is detected in a transferred Pokemon game. For Pokemon Pinball, Pikachu serves as a ball saver, but it will only work if the lightning meter is full. So make sure that lightning meter is full, or else you won't get a ball saver. But there's also Pokemon Pinball, Ruby and Sapphire, in which Pikachu has the same role as in Pokemon Pinball, but is sometimes helped by Pichu. So that's a pretty big help for Pichu. And Pikachu also appears on the catch em mode banner. Now, for Pokemon Channel, much like, Hey you, Pikachu! Pokemon Channel focuses on a boy and a Pikachu bonding through social interactions, such as going outside and talking to other Pokemon and watching TV together. Yeah, that's a pretty neat game for Pikachu. Now, when it comes to Pikachu in the TV series, there's a lot to go over for Pikachu. So for Ash's Pikachu, Ash Ketchum has a Pikachu that he obtained from Professor Oak in Pokemon I Choose You, which was the first episode of the Pokemon series, which also marked its debut. He is the signature Pokemon of the uh, TV series and has appeared in every non-special episode and every Pokemon movie since Ash's Pikachu remains outside of his Pokeball. Wow. That is pretty cool. I think Pikachu likes traveling with Ash a lot. Now, for Pikachu 2. In Mewtwo Strikes Back, Mewtwo cloned Ash's Pikachu. This Pikachu can be distinguished from Ash's due to the spikes in the black marks found on the tip of its ears. It is also comparatively more aggressive than Ash's Pikachu and slurs its speech. Defects uh, possibly uh, caused by Ash tampering with Mewtwo's cloning machine during the cloning process. Wow, it looks like maybe these Pokemon are fighting. Now, we get to Puka? Oh, that's a pretty neat name. Pr pretty weird. A Pikachu nicknamed Puka was owned by Victor on Seafoam Island in the Paya Kahuna. This uh, blue-eyed Pikachu saved Ash from drowning by having the ability to sense tidal waves approaching. So that's pretty cool. Now for Sparky. Richie has a Pikachu na named uh, Sparky who debuted in a friend indeed. Sparky, unlike most Pikachu, has a tuft of fur on the top of its head. And unlike Ash's Pikachu, it has no problem with living inside a Pokeball. So... Looks like uh, Sparky is uh, being friends with Richie as well. Now for Ashachu. Wait, what? Ashachu? Ash gets turned into a Pikachu in Hocus Pokemon by a Pokemon magician named Lily. He reverts to his human form at the beginning of the next episode. Wow, that is actually pretty weird. And yet still funny. Cosplay Pikachu which is all of the cosplay Pikachu appeared in Lights, Camera, Pika under the ownership of Frank. They reappeared in Hoopa and the Clash of Ages, where they were all summoned by Hoopa as part of a prank on Ash and his Pikachu. So, that's a pretty funny prank. And for Ash's Pikachu in the movie number 20, which is I Choose You, the Ash Ketchum of the alternate continually introduced in I Choose You, has a Pikachu of his own, like the Pikachu of the main series. This Pikachu was his first Pokemon as his main partner, remaining outside of his Pokeball. It looks like they're starting the series and then going back to square one, which is I Choose You. 
So it's actually pretty weird to see uh, the Pokemon series going back to the beginning when they did movie number 20. Now here is Pikachu shiny form. So it looks a golden kind of color, but it might be a little bit difficult to notice. But uh, you can still tell if it's uh, shiny or not. But there's also a QR code if you want to register that uh, shiny form into Pokemon Sun and Moon. Here are some other facts about Pikachu that I haven't mentioned. Pikachu and its evolved form share their category, the mouse Pokemon, with Rattata, Raticate, Sandshrew, and Sandslash. Wow, so Pikachu is a mouse Pokemon as well. Pikachu has the most event exclusive moves available to it. Well, it looks like Pikachu has a lot of moves he can learn. Pikachu is the only starter Pokemon that does not have a 7-1 gender ratio. So it looks like a lot of the starters have a 12.5% chance of being female, but for Pikachu, he is actually not one of them. And for Pikachu, is the only not fully evolved Pokemon whose base stats increased in Generation 4, I mean Generation 6, and also the only to receive more than one defense and special defense. Soon, Pikachu is the only Pokemon that can be caught in all three pinball titles. Pokemon Pinball, Pokemon Pinball Mini, and Pokemon Pinball Ruby and Sapphire. Well, that's pretty cool. And Pikachu is number 25 in both the National Pokedex and Alola Pokedex in Sun and Moon. So it looks like Pikachu has such a pretty big accomplishment. Way to go.